right, our second speaker this evening, uh, and uh, just so you know, we invite all speakers, we try to get all the Democrats, we invite them and let them know they're welcome here to come and make a pitch for their, uh, keep, uh, for their candidacy. So our second speaker is Josh Sakem, who's running as a Democrat, challenging Bill Galvin for the Secretary of State, and uh, Josh, uh, and Josh is presently a City Council of Boston, right? Yes, okay, Josh Sakem, come on up. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being committed Democrats. Uh, that's something uh, we're seeing more and more of these days, and we need more and more of these days. So thank you for that, uh, for our state, for our country. Uh, we need it. Uh, my name is Josh Zakem. I'm in my third term on the Boston City Council, and I'm running to be your next Secretary of State. Uh, before I was on the City Council, I worked at Greater Boston Legal Services, helping families that were at risk of losing their homes to foreclosure uh, in 2010 during the subprime lending and foreclosure crisis. Uh, at that time, we worked with all levels of government, uh, President Obama's Treasury Department, Governor Patrick's administration, many local city and town governments across Greater Boston to hold banks accountable, to hold lenders accountable, to help families stay in their homes. And I learned a couple really important things doing that. And one that I think is the most important is how powerful a force for good our government can be when we are working together, when we're collaborating at all levels of government, but in our neighborhoods too, with our neighbors, with community groups, with activists, with local officials. And it's that collaborative approach I've tried to take with me uh, as I continue in public service on the Boston City Council. I've chaired our Civil Rights Committee on the Council. It's been a privilege the last three terms. And we've looked at a range of issues around, uh, around civil rights, whether uh, housing equity, employment issues, uh, most recently workplace harassment and sexual harassment protocols, and also immigration issues. Uh, in 2014, I was proud to be the author of the Boston Trust Act, which is the legislation that our current President Trump uh, can't stand because he says we're a sanctuary city, says we're outlaws, says we're the source of all evil uh, in, the com in the country. Uh, he said that just a few weeks ago when he was in New Hampshire, and I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of his response, obviously, these days, but uh, I'm proud of the work we've done to make our city safer for everyone, uh, to focus our police and public resources on real issues, not enforcing failed federal immigration policy. And, but that's an example of the kind of progressive legislation, progressive action I've taken as a city councilor. What I want to do as your Secretary of State. To me, the most important civil right we have is the right to vote. And the Secretary of State is the Chief Elections Officer of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And there is no excuse for why Massachusetts has fallen so far behind on voter registration and access issues. There's no excuse why we are not one of the 15 jurisdictions, 14 states in D.C. that already have same-day voter registration. There is no excuse why we don't have automatic voter registration. As of last week, New Jersey and Maryland passed automatic voter registration. You know, we're talking about calling the Speaker and working on this on the, at the State House, and we should do that. But we also need a Secretary of State who is going to be an advocate for this from the very beginning. I've been a vocal advocate for automatic voter registration since long before this campaign began, and it's something I would look forward to implementing as your next secretary. We need to make sure we are working with people, the nearly 700,000 eligible residents in Massachusetts who are not currently registered to vote. We need to get them registered to vote. We're here Democrats. We're gearing up for a big election in November against Charlie Baker, and people forget that he won his first election by about 40,000 votes. You know, he may be Mr. Popularity, Mr. Tall, whatever it is now, but he barely won four years ago. Every single vote counts. And the fact that we have a 20-day voter registration deadline, that we have other unnecessary obstacles in the way of people's access to voting, has real impacts in our elections. And we need a Secretary of State who's going to make sure Massachusetts is a leader when it comes to elections, when it comes to voting. The way this state, this commonwealth has led throughout our nation's history, from the Revolutionary War to the abolition movement to universal health care to marriage equality, Massachusetts has led. And where we go, other states follow. Sometimes kicking and screaming, sometimes a decade or three decades later, but we need to be that leader. We need to be that leader for the rest of the country in 2018 when our rights and our values are under attack from a hostile president and the other party, but we need to do it for the people here in the Commonwealth also because we get better government. We get more accountable, more responsive, more transparent government when more people are casting votes. That's why I'm running to be your Secretary of State. The Secretary's office also has oversight over the securities industry in Massachusetts, the Mass Historic Commission, the Public Records Division, the Corporations Division, a Lobbying Division. There's a lot there, and there are changes I'd like to make in each of those divisions, in particular around public records, making sure that our public records are more accessible to people who are entitled to them. That's us, the public. 
Massachusetts routinely ranks towards the bottom of states when it comes to access to public records and public documents. Now ultimately, we need to change our public records laws. We need to work with the legislature to do that. But in the meantime, while the Secretary of State should be advocating for that every single day, the Secretary of State also has a lot of discretion under our current laws to order more documents turned over. We hear more and more about the state police and these quasi-public agencies that are not turning over the payroll data that we have to depend on the Boston Globe uh, and other reporters to find out for us. And that's their job, and they're doing a good job at it. But the Secretary of State is a supervisor of public records and should be ordering these documents to be turned over. And should, if they're not, should be working with the Attorney General to compel them to be turned over. Not as has happened so often in the past under the current administration where the Secretary's office has sided with government agencies on the side of secrecy saying we're not going to turn over documents and relying on institutions like the Boston Globe who luckily have the resources to take them to court and they do and they often win but we shouldn't have to rely on private organizations like the Globe to stand up for us. That's something our elected officials, that's something our Secretary of State as a supervisor of public records should and could be doing every day. We have an opportunity here in Massachusetts to make changes. The status quo is not acceptable in 2018. We have progressive leaders throughout our Commonwealth. We have a great Attorney General, Maura Healey, who has really changed the way we look at the Attorney General's office, who has taken the powers of that office and has decided she's not going to administer it, she's going to lead from it. That's the kind of Secretary of State I will be. I have a record on the City Council the last four and a half years of being an advocate, of pushing an agenda forward of inclusiveness, of fighting for change, of standing up to powerful interests, and standing up for those who are not able to stand up for themselves. That is why we should be in public office. Those are the kind of elected officials we are all entitled to. We need someone who is going to be out in our communities, in rooms like this, talking about what the Secretary of State does, helping people get registered to vote, working with our legislature and our governor to make these policy changes. Just last week, a bill I've been working on for over a year in Boston to make it easier for people to register to vote was signed by Mayor Marty Walsh. I'm very proud of that. Among other things, it's going to require our Boston public schools to help young people, 16, 17, and 18 year olds, register to vote. In Massachusetts, if you're 16 or 17, you can pre-register. If you're 18, obviously you can register. And we now require that in Boston. That's work I've done with my colleagues, with Mayor Walsh, and we got that done. We're also making sure that when you get a resident parking permit or a library card or register for schools in Boston, you're now going to be offered the opportunity to register to vote. Now, if we're successful at the State House and automatic voter registration is put in place, I'll say that's awesome. Thanks so much. We don't need this anymore in the city of Boston and other communities uh, across the state which are beginning to follow our lead. Since we passed this bill, I've heard from city councilors and select board members across the state who want to do it themselves because people are frustrated, because we need to be standing up, because when we don't have leadership in the state house on this, we need to lead for our cities and towns. But what we really do need is a chief elections officer who's going to push for these changes. I, I think, and I said this before, this is a time of change and opportunity for Massachusetts. We can change the way we do business in the public sector in Massachusetts by bringing more people into the process, by doing what other states have done. And not only is it more fair, it's more democratic, but you get better policy results. You get more progressive policy results. You elect more Democrats. But more importantly, we go a long way to restoring people's faith in democracy when we un t take down these unnecessary barriers. So I hope you liked what you heard tonight. I hope you'll consider voting for me, those of you who are going to the convention in June. We need to get our 15% to get on the ballot. The primary is September 4th. It's the day after Labor Day. Uh, please don't forget. I know it's the first day of school in a lot of communities. Um, but we have a real opportunity here, and that's why I ask for your support. My name is Josh Zakem. I hope to be your next Secretary of State. Thanks so much for your attention, your engagement, and hopefully your votes in September. And I'm happy to take some questions to the extent we have time. Yeah, are there any questions? What's going to be your um, magic um, with the Speaker of the House mm -hmm. to get this vote? Sure. So for automatic registration, I will actually be pushing for it. Um, now, Secretary Galvin, as of about a month ago, since this campaign began, decided he supports automatic registration. I've been advocating and pushing for this for well over a year. We filed resolutions. We worked with my colleagues on the city council to call on our Boston legislatures, legislators to do this. So sure, I mean, the speaker is the speaker. And I have no magic, I have no magic bullet. I have no magic solution. But I will tell you, I'm going to fight every day. And I have been doing it. That's why I'm in this race. Secretary Galvin's had uh, nearly a quarter century to advocate for this. And I, I'm, I welcomed him when he came over to the pro-automatic voter registration side. Uh, 
a little while ago in this campaign, but you need someone who's been committed to this and who's going to really do everything you can. We're not going to win all these battles with the legislature. That's, I mean, that's our system and that's fine, but you need to fight them. And you can't only fight those battles when you're being pushed in an election. You need to do it in the four years in between. I'll just say I'm glad that uh, you're pushing on this issue and have been pushing on this issue. In fact, I spoke to Bill Galvin probably a month, month and a half ago on the phone, and I said, Bill, the time for same-day voter registration is now behind us because we really need automatic voter registration. And as all of us sitting in this room, or many of us sitting in this room, have been engaged in trying to register voters, right. and it's very difficult. Yeah. It's not something you just say, here, just fill out this form and off on your way, and they'll do it. People forget about it, whatever. So it's a welcome thing, and we, I certainly agree 100% with you that the best way for us to be able to move society forward is to have people vote. Yeah. And the best way to do that is there's no excuse. You can't say you're not registered to vote. You're 18, you're a citizen, you are eligible to vote, you get the vote. Yeah. And that's what we need. So I'm glad you're doing that. Thank and you. I thank you for coming and visiting us. Right.